Hi everyone and welcome to another EFC prediction video. Today we'll be looking at the Eurovision Australia decide the Eurovision Australia decides entries. And with us we've got Costa, Lisa, and of course Laura from Aussie Vision. Hello. And let's get on with it. Um, all right, then so the competing entries in this year's um, Eurovision Australia decides are Casey Donovan with the song Proud, very original. Diana Rivers with Can We Make Heaven? Did Diddy with Raw Stuff. Iotis with the song Life. Jack Vidgen with I Am King, I Am Queen. Jack Yorionze with Rabbit Hole. Jordan Ravi with Pushing Stars. Mitch Tambo with Together. Montaigne with Don't Break Me. Vanessa Amorosi with the song Lessons of Love. Lovely. Okay, to the Australians in the room. Well, I'm <laughs> calling you an Australian, Lisa, by like, Everyone you're an honorary. I'm yeah. an Australian now. She's an honorary <laughs> Australian now. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this national final? Obviously, it's the second time Australia have attempted a national final. Um, and it was quite a high bar that they set last year. So what are your thoughts overall? I think they're still going along the same trajectory as last year. Like, everyone's sort of like, oh, where is the pop banger and stuff like that? But I, I know we weren't going to quite get that because they seem intent on being like, well, this is the best of us. This is what's happening now in our music scene. These are also some people that have also done well in the past and then they're like coming back like like Vanessa. So they, they, they give you that. They give you nostalgia. They give you what's happening now. And there's just like there's something for everyone in that whole in that whole selection of 10. Yeah, I think overall the quality, I think, has lifted even a little bit since last year. Um, I know last year it was a competition between two huge favorites and then there was like sort of the rest of the field and then like third and fourth was like oh they might get out they have a chance and then the rest were like the rest um but I think this year it's a bit more competitive which I really like to see I think the quality is really lifted we've got some more independent acts coming in um off of our independent radio station triple j or like people who started out there so that's really exciting to see. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, when I first started hearing the songs and they were trickling out, I was really underwhelmed. And I think having now listened to the full playlist a few times today at work, I was surprised by how much a lot of the songs have grown on me. Um, my biggest issue with the national final is the lack of um, tempo diversity, we'll call it. <laughs> It's all yeah. very mid-tempo, and I think it's a bizarre choice for a 10-song national final to have almost the entire selection in mid-tempo or, like, pop ballads. There's some drama diversity. You obviously have Iota with a kind of radio rock song and um, Jagger John's with a bit more indie rock. But And then Mitch Tambo kind of bringing some Aboriginal um, sounds to his entry. I... I just wish there was a bit more, there was some more like straight up ballads and some like up tempo, genuine kind of danceful songs. Mm. I think. Well, you know what I'm like in yeah. that regard too. Yeah, yeah Lisa. <laughs> no. I still have several yeah, songs that I really like and I, I'd be happy to have as their entries. Okay, so let's kind of go into that. Who are your favourites? Who are you kind of rooting for? Me personally, my, my my two front runners are Vanessa and Montaigne because I've always stand Vanessa because absolutely everybody is that banger. And uh, yeah, Montaigne is delivering something that is a sound very much now and is happening in the chart. So yeah, the, 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 they're my two favourites and they're the two that I can see probably challenging. Yeah, I'd have to go with the same favourites. I know, hive mind. Hive mind. <laughs> yeah. 
Vanessa is like Vanessa's song is my personal favorite even though it's more of like pop ballad I think it's produced really really nicely although if Vanessa fans from back in the day go in expecting another absolutely everybody there's a good chance they'll be disappointed it's nowhere near as up tempo as that but I think it's still a very solid entry and if she showcases her vocals really well on the night I reckon it could definitely be a contender for the win Obviously, the other one is Montaigne with Don't Break Me. It's a song that very much sounds now. It sounds like it could be on the European charts. Um, it's obviously produced by or oh, written by part of DNA, which is one of the huge songwriting teams in Australia who's done entries like Sound of Silence, Don't Come Easy, and We Got Love. So... Mixed track record, but they have had some <laughs> success. They've got two top ten entries out of that. So who knows? Could it be another one? And also Montaigne was one of the artists, as I mentioned earlier, that came out of Triple J, our independent radio station. So she has a lot of indie fans who are fans of her other discography as well. So she's sure to draw a broad range of appeal there. Uh Tim, who are who are you rooting for? Oh my God, we're gonna we're all gonna have the same. We're gonna have trouble because I agree with both me. <laughs> I agree with the girls. So I really like Vanessa and Montaigne. Montaigne kind of like reminds me like of an up and coming Australia. Well, I can't really say Australian because Sia is Australian. So I and I really like that that type of Scott style and her vocals are just breathless. <laughs> Um, and with Vanessa, and I've never really heard of her until this, and then I kind of went back to her original, well, her previous catalogue, and I mean... Well, I'm old, so that's how I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, she was huge in Australia. Yeah, I can see why she's huge, and I mean, for me personally, it's not the same as her previous songs, but... I'm just hoping she proves herself well on the night because out of all of these artists, it's all going to depend on the live performance. And so far, it's the, Montaigne is kind of like the front runner for me that I can just imagine her seeing this on that stage. And that's my top two. I think it's interesting that um, in the last few years with the kind of as internal selections versus national final songs have become more of a thing because of the internet, because of Spotify and the whole kind of YouTube release um, extravaganza that we've been getting from songs like Fuego in the past and also Arcade. Um, a lot of artists in national finals are making a point of releasing their songs right to the wire and then using that to get momentum. Um, we're seeing it with um, one of the songs in Vid Vidby this year, the finals on Saturday and um, one of the favourites pre-show hasn't even been released yet. Um, and I think Montaigne used a similar approach by releasing her song last. And it paid off well because she's already leading my Eurovision school board uh, by almost a solid thousand points. And she's being hyped quite acro like across the board, really. And I was rooting for Vanessa at first based on the nine songs. And then as soon as Montaigne came out, I was like, Hmm, I think this is a better version of how to do a kind of a pop ballad. And I think the production is just a bit more modern. And I think it'll be a, it would be a much more interesting, edgy choice for Australia compared to what they've sent in the past. Whereas Vanessa would be very much in tune. I'll be a bit more elevated than something like Isaiah's song. But I also want to give a shout out to some other songs that I think could uh, maybe do surprisingly well that we haven't mentioned. So Diana Rubas' song, again, it's very Australian, but it's got a bit more of a kind of a, I guess, a soul influence. And vocally, it's very impressive in the recording. So I'm looking forward to seeing if she can pull it off live. And if she can, I think it could do decently well. Or she could be the Leo Nanos of this year and just completely do absolutely nothing, despite having a great song and deserving better. Oh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> but she was fine live, but like it, is, it came ninth. It should have done better. Yeah. I love that song. And also, I hate to say it because it's not my favourite, but um, Jack Vigeon mm. might have a, a wah mm -hmm. effect. 
like Bilal did mm. last year, it's obviously a very topical kind of gender ambiguity, gender expression theme. And vocally, um, they're pretty much on point. I think they have a very unique arresting voice and that can carry someone very far. I think they'd be in trouble if they went to Eurovision because they're in a very stuck semi, which we'll get to in a bit. And I also want to shout Mitch Tambo, who hasn't been getting much yeah, love, but I think that mm, song is beautiful. Yeah, that's my third favourite. I mean, it has Dietrich doing it. I mean, we have to stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, Australia doesn't have had any other songs, either in their national final or sent to Eurovision, that had Dietrich doing it. So mm-hmm. shout out to Mitch first. I think that's amazing. Yeah, that's not normally my my thing, but I I really I really yeah. like together. And I think it lends itself to really well good staging, more so than any yeah. other song. Yeah, you can yeah. actually pick the staging for that already. Whereas some it's a bit of a struggle. Yeah, I mean with this one it's like it's nice to have like the roots on an entry because obviously the purpose of the Eurovision Song Contest is to show off your country to the world and Mitch exactly done that on his entry. I'm just imagining how the things I'm just imagining how how he'll sing it live on this weekend. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing it live too. Although I do have some different outsider picks that have mm. been picking up a little bit of steam. One of them is mm. actually raw stuff by Dadiri, and it's a bit mm. unusual because like I didn't know who Dadiri was before he was announced for Australia Decides, but he's been really popular on Spotify and the streaming services. And I think that emotional ballad just really hits a chord with some people and people will like that it's raw and authentic. Mm-hmm. And the other one is Jagger Jones' uh, Rabbit Hole, which again, is this really left of field indie rock entry, which I think she'll have an amazing visual in terms of staging as well. As we've seen from the music video, I've heard it's going to be similar to that. So that's got people excited. Jaguar Jones' song is my third in my top 10. Yeah, I'm a, I'm actually, Rabbit Hole didn't hit me at first, but on repeated listens, I'm literally about to move out my um, school board as I'm saying that. Um, yeah, my top three currently is Montaigne first, then Mitch Tambo, then Jaguar, and Vanessa in fourth. Um, and I think that any of, I think Jaguar, as much as I like it, I would have to see it live before I can say if it's competitive or not. And like mm-hmm. I said, um, they're in a really stuck semi this year, Australia. And if there was ever a time where they could be in trouble for qualification, just purely based on who they're up against and the fact that their televote is quite unpredictable, they need a strong entry. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that without any of the other competitors, but I, I feel I feel it in my waters. <laughs> I mean, if they pick the right entry, do you think the jury could save them? Because with the voting. Because you know how yeah, yeah. people, people how people how think that because Australia, I don't know, like this fandom sometimes see this as like a novelty and act, like con- entry or act, but like, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not the fault that you know they produce like a jury friendly song at the end of the day. So, wh- whatever, whatever Australia decides to send, there's a big chance of the um the jury could save them if their teleport is weak in the end. Oh uh, yeah, I mean if they send if they send Montaigne then she's going to have that like if the com- if the jury is sort of leaning towards oh what sounds really commercial like when they all fell for arcade then they could have the same appeal with Montaigne and be like oh wow this sounds very commercial and now and save it and save it that way but we don't know any running order mm. or anything in, in, in that yeah yeah that's what makes it so interesting um yeah that being said australia have pulled actually like three top 10 televote figures in the past five years with guy darmy and kate so yeah that's still enviable numbers so we haven't done as badly in the televote as some people might think yeah we've had mm-hmm. two shocking years 2017 and 2018 but overall I think we've my got mind a pretty is good track record how, how 
badly well how well not that we do and like wow top 10 televotes where are they (laughs) what I think some of my reservations come from the fact that the songs on kind of initial listen sound all very much like jury songs because they haven't got that kind of memorability that a televote song has Mm -hmm. and however I will say that I think the good thing about a mid-tempo or ballad is that it's a lot easier to pull off live and it's a lot easier to elevate live. It's really hard to elevate a really banging studio track that's up-tempo, that kicks, and kind of do it justice live. Whereas if you have a ballad, you can kind of do anything with it and still make it sound decent. Yeah, um, like that Dummy, yeah. for example, did Dummy. that when it was a fairly sort of pedestrian mid-tempo song and then all of a sudden she just did that vocal and elevated an average song into next level yeah i think a dummy infected could be a huge factor in australia decides we've got a few singers in there who are really known for being top-notch vocalists so like vanessa diana casey donovan um two out of three of those have won reality tv singing contests so they've got some next level vocals in there and there's every chance those songs could all be elevated by the live performance yeah on a kind of a concluding note from me i think i would say that montaigne is top of my ranking and i think competitively could win but unlike last year i think it's gonna be very flat voting wise because there's less of a gradient with quality i think the pack's gonna be a lot tighter and i think there could be room for an upset there if the jury really gets behind one artist and the televotes aren't spread. Um, So I think it's going to be quite a a gripping show to kick off our Saturday. Um, So yeah, I would say Montaigne top, but I would say Jack could sneak in there and and surprise us and then Mm. not do very well in Rotterdam. But that's just my pick. What what are we saying in terms of like a Uh, prediction? Well, I I think it's going to be probably be between Vanessa and Montaigne and it's going to come down to whoever has the most staging budget but then also vocals because Montaigne's song it's a very intricate vocal in terms of she does have a very strong vibrato that needs controlling and I mean she does have experience performing live but then it's like how does that translate into a tv performance whereas Vanessa has more sort of TV experience in in that regard and sort of knows what she's doing and has been around for a while. So it's there's interesting dynamics at, at play going on. And then of course you've got some of the boys like Mitch or Dadiri that could like sneak in there if people if 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 so if if songs sort of split their votes. So yeah, and mm-hmm. it, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. It, it's it's not as clear cut as it seemed like last year yeah absolutely I really think again it's between Vanessa in terms of like the commercial pack and Montaigne in terms of the more indie pack if you call it that way Mm. if you can put it that way um it will depend on whether or not Montaigne's televotes get split among the Triple J audience and whether com- yeah. the commercial audience is more interested in commercial songs. So maybe older people get on board with Don't Break Me and it also, again, come down to staging and live vocals. So mm-hmm. it could go either way. But if I had to, like, if you had to say, okay, give me a prediction now, I'd probably lean towards Montaigne. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tim? I mean, I- I think we're all in unison then. Um, uh, me mostly with the girls is between Montaigne and Vanessa, but the thing is, Montaigne is slightly more ahead than Vanessa, just a little bit because of the fact that um, I think she's a great vocal performer, um, and I think the jurors would love this song. But the thing is, if yeah, you it's ask a very me acceptable how, song. yeah, if you ask me to fully rank them specifically I can't tell you that because as with um I mean as I've seen last year I thought Shepard was gonna do well and they came out like fifth so third <laughs> kind of like, oh, sorry, <laughs> get it right Tim all right then but yeah um yeah so with that anything can happen so it's all I can say it's all gonna depend I'm just going to say that it could depend on 
how the performance can go on the night because that can really change everything. Yeah. Okay, so there you have it, a, an Australasia special of <laughs> Eurovision prediction. Um, we ended this like we end all our videos saying, hell, anything could happen, which is very insightful and useful for everyone, I'm sure. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of content coming because a lot of national finals are happening in the coming weeks. And after that, we'll be doing our kind of insightful analytics driven reviews of all the songs once they're out so definitely keep mm -hmm. an eye on that um so from me um tim lisa and laura thank you very much and don't forget to check out aussie vision at aussievision.net we've got a whole bunch of polls from uh our tele public televote both international and local the aussie vision teams polls and rankings we've got um an international fan press jury and we also have a Australian music jury's opinions on all the songs so that's quite interesting to check out as well and the podcast and the podcast of course I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be checking out your site after this Spotify, Apple Music or wherever you get your podcasts mm -hmm. amazing love it all right thank you very much guys bye thank you thank you bye Thank you.